So if you guys are interested in uh, what we're doing out here in Thailand in more detail, because I sort of just give you the broad overview when I, when I make these videos, I'm going to give you a little bit more details now, but I actually encourage you to watch the video that I made earlier about why we're doing this. It's, I think, really often uh, critical for you to understand the motivations that underlie science to really appreciate why it's being done and why it's so important. Um, so check that out. But from there, I will tell you that, yes, we are studying the social lives of coral reef fish, multiple species of them. And we're doing this uh, to better understand what is, what are the causes of the feeding behavior of these fish. These fish eat algae, these algae can kill coral and destroy coral reefs as we know them and reduce the services they provide to humans. So we have a vested interest in understanding the feeding behavior of these fish uh, and early work that we've done suggests their social interactions can be critical for this. So specifically what Heather and I do out here to get at this more deeply is we follow fish and in different social contexts. So fish by themselves and in different size groups of different species compositions. Sometimes it's one species, sometimes it's multiple species. And we see how they behave. Uh, in a very fine scale way. We follow them with these underwater eye dives, which I've told you guys about in other videos, which are remarkable, an incredible invention for the kind of work we're doing because it gives us literally incredibly fine scale, uh, to the second measurements on what fish are doing uh, and, and how they're doing it and basically what the social context is when they're doing it. So we can see, for example, how much do feeding rates change when an individual enters a small group versus swims off on its own versus enters a very large group? Uh, and we're tracking these individuals in space because we have a GPS strapped to us as we are above them a safe distance away not to affect their behavior. Um, but basically you can, you can track exactly where they're doing what they're doing and we know exactly what they're doing with the iPads. And so this will allow us to uh, construct relationships for how social interactions affect, uh, or ra rather, how social interactions are linked to the behaviors of these fish. And what we can later do with this information is build mathematical models that allow us to expand the insights we gain at this sort of small spatial scale, small time scale, to broader spatial scales, broader time scales that are more pertinent to conservation and the long-term management of these ecologically and socioeconomically critical ecosystems. Um, so essentially we, we follow fish like crazy <laughs> and we note every single thing we can while we're doing that uh, with hopes to better understand uh, exactly how these fish function and in doing so better understand how we can preserve the function of these fish in the face of human driven changes. So that's a little bit more about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and I will give you guys more info, info as things come along. Uh, these things are sort of dynamic. We have this general topic of key interest and we certainly explore that uh, at great lengths. But we also have additional ideas that will pop in our head while we're out here and we'll explore sort of tangential questions and ideas. So uh, I'll continue to fill you guys in, but I want you guys to understand uh, what it is we're doing. It's not just playing with awesome new technology, which is very exciting, but there is absolutely a purpose for it. And really the biggest thing we do out here is to try to think of creative ways to unlock knowledge that others have not been able to unlock yet. And that really can be really helpful to use technology to do that. Okay, more soon.